Welcome to Brain Boosters platform. In this presentation, I'll be discussing nursing care of a patient with mania. So let's go to AIMS. All right, so concerning our AIMS, AIMS, ladies and gentlemen, you take them from the points that you'll be discussing. All right, so uh one of my aims here is to prevent complications to prevent injuries to promote quick recovery to promote patient comfort okay so these are some of the aims based on what i'll be doing so under aims just write three points they are enough guys because the maximum number of marks you can get for aims is two okay so three points are enough all right let's talk about the environment now so environment you don't have to start talking about maintaining safety uh, you need to talk about just um, the nature of environment where you'll be nursing this patient from okay so the environment must be clean and well ventilated to promote comfort so you you need to relax these statements okay beginning with I will I will nest the patient in a clean and well ventilated environment to promote comfort and prevent nosocomial infections it's okay uh, the next point is uh, enough light for his observations of course the environment must be well lit okay to promote to, for easy observations and also to prevent injuries that may arise due to uh, having dim light or patient being nest in a dark environment this patient is very mobile so you you need them to be able to see uh, how they are moving otherwise the client will be hitting himself against the bed against uh, whatever is in the environment so we need to have enough light in this room should have an isolation room the environment should have an isolation room in case the patient is violent in case the patient is uncooperative in case you need to discipline the client you need to isolate them put them in this isolation room so the environment must have these ladies and gentlemen okay the environment must have this um also if you like you can bring the point of uh, making uh, the doors of this environment the wand should be uh, lockable from outside not from the inside because you do not want the patient to to be able to lock himself up in the room but to prevent you from entering and all that okay but this point fits well under maintaining safety all right let's talk about maintaining safety maintaining safety it's very important that we maintain safety for the client with mania so these are some of the points that you can talk about ladies and gentlemen uh, no potential weapons should be in the environment very very true uh, the environment must be cleared of all items that can be used as a weapon against the patient himself or against others in the environment these um, items could be loose cables it could be loose chairs it could be um, um, forceps it could be anything like maybe naked sockets naked cables electrical cables you have to remove them okay there shouldn't be anything that a current can pick and hit someone or um, hit you the staff member so make sure the environment is free of all such items it may not be such um, items that have mentioned but it can be items like beddings sometimes if you are isolating the client especially you do not have to put bed sheets in the isolation room just nest, nest them on a mattress give them a mattress because bed sheets can be used to strangle himself okay so such are not uh, encouraged especially 
If you suspect that your client is suicidal, don't include such items. Okay, so maintaining safety, drugs should be locked up. Uh, drugs, drugs should be locked up so that patient has no access. It's true, all drugs, all medication should be in the drug cupboard. Client should have not should have no access. Okay, because the client may decide to abuse medication or to overdose himself. So yeah. Non slippery flow to prevent falls. A patient with mania we said is hyper, very very hyperactive. So we do not want them to to uh, attain any injuries due to uh, falls. So make sure the floor where this patient is is not very slippery. Or um, ask the cleaners not to polish the floor too much to prevent it to prevent uh, patients from falling as a result of a slippery floor. Okay, uh, the beds and chairs should be fixed. Make sure that the ward where the patient is, uh, the chairs are not movable um, and the beds are not movable. Make uh, If there are any chairs, make sure that these are solid chairs. They have no, they are not broken uh, anyhow because the patient may easily injure himself due to, to falling or hitting himself against such items if when they are misplaced the doors should be lockable from outside this is the point I said it fits well under maintaining safety okay because why are we why do we nest this patient in a, a ward whose doors are lockable from outside the patient may decide to lock himself up in the in the in the ward with other patients and begin to uh, to fight other patients or they may lock themselves in the ward with you and if they have anything against you a staff member they'll strangle you they'll start beating you up or, or sometimes the patient may just lock himself up to stab himself so that you do not have access to him at all so the doors of the ward must be locked from the outside if the client is violent do not try to handle him alone so what's behind here is handle uh, don't try to handle the client by yourself alone if the client is violent ladies and gentlemen because the client may retaliate may uh, may try may misinterpret your intervention and feel you are trying to fight then they'll try to defend themselves and when that happens the client may overpower you so make sure that you call for help every time you the client has become uncontrollable they are violent or aggressive you need to call for help all the time okay Let's talk about building a therapeutic relationship now. Building a therapeutic relationship. Um, you need to introduce yourself to the patient to promote patient cooperation. Very important. The patient must know who they are working with. Okay, they, they need to know who's uh, trying to help them so introduce yourself and your roles tell the patient who you are and uh, that you are there to help them okay in this by doing by so doing you'll be um, promoting cooperation the patient will agree to be attended to by you be non-judgmental and convey genuine respect for patient can confide uh, in you for anything all right um, yes so you have to be non-judgmental and convey genuine respect to the patient uh, 
in this case the patient will be able to confide in you for anything if there is anything that the client has the, the client is planning to to do something to do something bad or to, to do anything the client has been planning something the client will always be telling you the client is feeling something uh, strange the client will be able to come to you and tell you okay you need to create that atmosphere where the client will be very comfortable to come and uh, to express himself to you so don't judge the patient about their condition okay um, by sorry by conveying genuine respect call the client by his name you don't shout at the patient anyhow it's not necessary okay those are not necessary spend time with your patient this will strengthen the relationship and build trust uh, it's important that you spend time with your client uh, of course to strengthen the relationship between you two and also to uh, build trust in your uh, in your patient in your relationship so in your busy schedule you may spare some time uh, just a moment or a, a few minutes or or some five minutes two minutes you just have a short chat with your client okay these patients have a lot of things to talk about a lot they may have a lot of things to talk about so you showing interest in what they have to say will will make them uh, will help them be very open with you okay because you are showing that interest to have a conversation with them even in your busy schedule um, explain your nursing procedures to promote cooperation it's, Im it's important that you explain what you'll be doing any procedure you are carrying out on your patient sometimes these patients may be paranoid so you don't want them to uh, to have that paranoia when you are trying to help them so make sure that you explain what you are doing and let the client understand get permission before touching the client so if you are carrying out any procedures that require physical contact make sure that the client is informed you get consent from the client before touching them All right otherwise the client may misinterpret your touching as as a fight so they will retaliate and you don't want that to happen avoid whispering in front of the patient whispering to someone else don't because client may be suspicious that you are talking about him is the subject of your of, of your of your discussion with whoever you are talking to so avoid whispering in the presence of the patient okay avoid making promises that you cannot fulfill promising unnecessarily just because you want to win your client's cooperation is not advisable these patients do not forget and once you promise and you do not fulfill your promise they will lose trust in you and you don't want that to happen so make sure that you don't make a promise if you know you cannot fulfill it don't just make a promise to your client okay um i guess these are some of the points that you can talk about under maintaining a therapeutic relationship I said some because there are some more points there are more points that you can include here so I want you to be free guys be free to look for points and be free to write what you think is right and then re you need to relate these statements just just don't just copy and paste the way it is you relate these statements beginning with I will do this I will do this I will do this okay so I'm giving you clues I'm giving you points that you can use if you're very good at recording information you can use these points and you get your marks let's go to psychological care psychological care psychological care is a form of counseling that you give to your patients there are different forms of psychological care um, among which we have behavioral therapy the cognitive therapy um, 
psychoanalysis, all those. But in this case, we are looking at a gland in the world. Okay, so if we have to attach them to a specific counselor, we can we can attach them for a specific service. But there are certain things that we can also be doing as nurses in the world to provide psychological care to the client. These are some of the uh, interventions that you can put in place under psychological care. Explain the condition to promote cooperation. So the client needs to know what kind of a condition they are suffering from. This will help promote cooperation because they have understood the, the nature of the condition that they are suffering from. Encourage client to ask questions you need to encourage the client to ask questions and answer them um, appropriately. This will help allay patient's anxiety. Okay. Always give consent. Get consent before touching the client as this can be perceived as an attack. So you need to get consent um, before touching the client. You know, your client may be too anxious and so if you don't inform the client you may just raise their anxiety to panic levels and they may perceive your touch as an attack keep client informed about the procedures to be done to promote cooperation as well so you need to make sure that the client is informed about the procedures that you are carrying out Right, this will help the client will promote cooperation and you want the client to really cooperate. Explain the side effects of the drug, the medications to the patient and his relatives. When you explain the side effects of the medications, your client will be compliant to your drugs. Okay? When they see those side effects they will know that okay it's because of the medication that I'm that I'm taking and uh, they will know what to do about it because you told them all right so they will not be too anxious about it whatever side effects that they will develop because you told them already about them so they will have that knowledge promotion of a good nutritional status patients with mania have issues with food not that they do not have appetite but they just don't have time to eat okay they don't have time to eat so what are we going to do for the patient we need to remind the client to eat because he may not feel the need to eat okay the client is usually too busy and occupied by uh, with a lot of uh, things thoughts and all that so we need to remind the client to eat um the client is hyperactive we've been moving up and down failing to sit in one position in one place so they may not sit for some time to eat food in bulk at once therefore we need to give the client finger foods to eat as he walks around all right so the client must be given finger foods for him to eat as he walks around the world these finger foods could be uh, a slice of bread fritters a bun or anything that a client can move around with okay can can eat as he moves around make a uh, client feed the time when everyone is feeding to encourage him to eat all right so when it's lunch time you need to make the client feed no, don't just remind the client to, to eat no sometimes these people need to they need you to to, to uh, take them through the process of eating okay so you need to make the client feed at the time when everyone is feeding this will promote or encourage him to eat the other point you can talk about is uh, encourage the family to bring clients favorite meals to promote appetite All right yes sometimes the client may have uh, favorite foods that he may not have access to in the hospital and you may not be in the position to provide such food as a nurse. <laughs> Excuse me. So, you will need to involve the family in this case. 
ask them or allow them or encourage the family to bring patient's favorite food all right sit with the client when it's time to feed um, this will will encourage or motivate the client to eat all right so you sit with them when it's time to feed as a means of motivation to eat so the client will be motivated when you are with him and encouraging him to continue eating continue eating because as he feeds you should be there to be reminding him that he is actually eating you will be forgetting that he's on the table he's, he's feeding so he begins to do something else so you need to be reminding him so when you are sit you are sitting down with him it doesn't mean you you also have to be eating from his plate no okay just uh, eat the food just um, encourage the clients to eat his food all right the other thing is um, sometimes these clients may be paranoid you know and they will be failing to eat the food they'll be failing to eat because they suspect that someone is trying to poison them you need to make sure that the food being given to the patient is sealed so that the client is opening that food on his own by himself okay um yeah make sure that the client the food is sealed if the client is paranoid and very suspicious he may suspect that someone is trying to poison him so if the food is nicely sealed the client will will feel safe to eat the food let's talk about observations now observations observations we need to take vital signs uh, this will be will act as baseline data and it will help us to rule out any deviations from normal or any abnormalities okay they are vital signs because they show us signs of life okay so if there is any uh, wrong data you collect under vital signs then you know that the client needs help in uh, another area so vital signs very important to take them as well observe clients social interaction and behavior to detect any unwanted behaviors on time this is important for us to do because the client may the clients uh, this this of this observation will, will, will also help us see whether the client is improving or not okay the clients behavior and his the way he's is uh, interacting you will see whether there are any unwanted behaviors then you will take action promptly observe the client to rule out drug side effects for early intervention it's important because sometimes the client would be uh, this side effects would be very severe so the client may need help or you may need to change the medication or the dosages and adjust the dosages of the medication so or you need to observe the client for these side effects this the drugs that we are giving this patient sometimes could be very strong drugs with very bad side effects such as lithium so the client will need close observation after giving them this drug um, observe the sleeping patterns to rule out insomnia so we need to observe the client and uh, see how his sleeping patterns are if the sleeping patterns are okay we encourage the client to continue um, if the sleeping patterns are altered we need to bring in some interventions to help the client have enough sleep observe feeding patterns throughout any unwanted patterns so in case the client is having challenges to feed we will observe that we will see that through assessments and observations of the client as they feed so 
this is also an important point to talk about under observations all right so um if there is anything else that i've left out here please feel free to uh, write it down or you may send me if you have any questions don't forget to ask me your questions you can type your questions or you can send them to my whatsapp account all right now let's go to assertiveness the client should be trained effective ways of stating his demands without being aggressive all right so sometimes a patient with mania may be very uh, may be easily irritable and uh, they will have some aggressive features so we have to train the client to be able to say to uh, make his request known in an assertive manner we don't want them to be doing uh, things aggressively or to be making a request aggressively client should be oriented on how to say uh, no to demands that he may not manage to meet sometimes clients may be taken advantage of by healthcare providers by fellow patients by people out there in the community so we have to train this patient uh, to say no if he cannot manage to meet the demands of um, another person he needs to be able to say no so let's train our patients to be assertive teach client on how to defend himself when facing stigma without being aggressive clients suffering from mental illness especially those who have even been admitted before in a psychiatric hospital they will face a lot of stigma when they are discharged when they go home so uh, we need to avoid that we need to prevent that by training the patient uh, how to be assertive teaching the patient about his rights teaching the patient about how to conduct himself in society so that he's acceptable teaching the client how to say no to these unnecessary demands without hating the feelings of another person it will really really help the person to be reintegrated in society without fail the other point i'll talk about is medication under this ladies and gentlemen there is no need of you talking about the names of the drug the dosages the route the mechanism of action missing side effects there is no need of talking about all those things here i'm saying this because i've seen a student write uh, those points under medication so uh, just administer prescribed medication observing the five rights okay the right patient the right drug the right dosage the right route the right time you give the patient medications according to those five rights make sure the client has swallowed the medication because he may keep the drug under his tongue and spit it out once you are out of sight sometimes clients may do this because they are keeping those tablets so that when the when they accumulate enough they will overdose themselves and die so make sure that you the client has swallowed the medication before you leave their bedside promoting good sleeping patterns patients with mania suffer from insomnia mostly all right so we need to help the client to uh, be able to rest and sleep these are some of the interventions we can put in place attach the patient to a gym for exercises so in short we need to encourage exercises uh, so that the client is exhausted during the day because he has used up his energy uh, and then at night he will be able to rest okay so um, 
if the client does not use up all his energy it's going to help uh, is it will definitely have a tough time resting at night when it comes when it, when it it's time to rest do not administer any caffeinated drinks at bedtime to promote rest very important don't give foods that have caffeine before bedtime to the patient because they will have a challenge to sleep these caffeinated drinks they uh, give insomnia uh, do bed making uh, to prevent irritation during sleep all right so the bed of the client should be cleaned sometimes you may not necessarily have to do it yourself this, because the client is mobile the client is fit uh, physically fit you can you can instruct the client to make his own bed okay instruct the client to make his own bed remove any noise from the environment to promote rest it's very important that the room is quiet when it's time for bed when when it's bedtime make sure the room is quiet no one singing no one playing any form of music and that will promote rest in your client make sure that the light is dim to promote rest as well yes so apart from uh, reducing noise make sure the room is uh has dim light or you turn off the lights when it's time for bedtime this will promote sleeping also do nursing care in blocks to promote to uh, allow enough time to rest so do not do nursing care one by one do them in blocks especially those that you can manage doing blocks do them at once so that you can give the client enough time to rest when it's time to rest okay Take all the trolleys to the uh, maintenance department uh, to have them on to prevent noise. All right. So if the plant, if the trolleys, if the instruments in the environment are very are making noise, you need to remove them. I think this point will fit very well under uh, this point as well. Okay. So it will fit very well under point number four in this presentation okay where we have to remove any noise from the environment so this can fit under point number four as well encourage the patient not uh, to take any fluids during bedtime to promote rest so fluids taking too much fluids uh, before just before bedtime will um, make the patient wake up during the night to pee and that will be an interruption to his sleep interruption to his sleep so we need to make sure the client does not take any fluids just before bedtime to promote rest all right so these are the points that some of the points you can talk about and uh, promoting good sleeping patterns okay so establish sleeping rituals in the world let patients know that okay it's time to sleep now it's time to pray it's time to sing and uh, after singing they go to bed um, social therapy social therapy uh, we need to teach the patient to respect other people's opinions um, this will uh, help the client be accepted by other people in the environment hence promoting uh, socialization involve patient in simple games with others to promote socialization as well so introduce simple games within the world to help the client to socialize with other patients in the world as they are playing the games 
teach the patient how to handle himself when he or she is upset to prevent exhibiting aggressive behavior to others we don't want this client to uh, exhibit or to show aggressive behaviors so we need to uh, make sure that we teach him uh, how to handle himself when he's upset okay uh, assign simple tasks or chores um, assign simple tasks or chores to the patient uh, to promote social interaction so uh, what you can do is um, you can put this pa you can put these patients in pairs of two so that uh, as they are doing those chores as the two patients are carrying out those chores the two of them they will be um, encouraged they will be they will be interacting okay so what you're doing here is trying to promote that social interaction so i think this will also help the client a lot when it comes to an intervention assigning simple tasks or chosen pairs to promote social interaction the other uh, point we, we need to talk about is behavioral therapy when we observe any abnormal behaviors in the client we want to make sure that the client um, adopts behaviors that are acceptable in the community in the society where he is therefore monitor patients to rule out changes in behavior to track progress in therapy it's important that we uh, observe this kind of behaviors okay to track the progress in therapy introduce physical and emotional coping methods to help the patient change his behavior all right so uh, you can introduce some uh, physical uh, coping strat strategies or methods emotional coping methods because you are simply trying to help the client change his behavior as well okay uh, positively reinforce acceptable behavior by praising the patient and giving of tokens you can give the client tokens small small presents when they do something or they behave in a manner that is acceptable in the community to encourage this patient to continue behaving like that through role plays and modeling uh, modeling techniques portray acceptable behavior and tell the patient to imitate your behavior to act as a role model to the patient so you need to uh, involve the client in some role plays where you also imi imitate uh, how um, uh, to imitate a good behavior so that the client can adopt that type of a behavior because that's what you want him to be okay um if the patient becomes violent we can take the patient into the isolation room so we lock the patient up in the isolation room uh, to prevent patient from getting attention from others so if the patient is behaving in a manner that is not acceptable they are violent or they are being aggressive you are allowed to isolate the client where you uh, they will not attract unnecessary attention attach the patient to a group with people suffering from same condition where he will learn about uh, more about how to handle himself his illness all right that's clear and straightforward remind clients to attend his therapy sessions sometimes the client may be uh, taken away in thought so you need to remind him as an ace in the world always remind the client to attend his group therapy sessions okay apart from us reminding we need to be able to ask for feedback from the client 
Each time he is back from his therapy to ensure client is receiving uh, the necessary help that he needs or he is improving. Okay. Also encourage the client to attend um, therapies, any therapies. Escort him to the uh, sessions uh, when you have time. All right. So uh, this this point, the grammar here is not so good. But uh, what this point simply says is that as a nurse, I need to encourage the patient, the client, to attend uh, his group therapy sessions, and uh, I should be able to escort him when I have time. I should be able to, I should have time to escort him to these sessions when I, I have time if I have time to escort him okay uh, escorting the client will simply encourage him to go for these uh, group therapy sessions for family therapy it's also important that we talk about it uh, involve the family in the care of the patient from admission to discharge. It's very important that the family is involved from um, the point of admission up to the time the patient is discharged. So in this case, the family will be uh, learning some skills on how to take care of a patient after discharge. Teach the family about their roles when patient is discharged. So uh, as you involve the family in the treatment of the patient you'll be teaching them their roles okay you'll be teaching them what you expect them to do when the patient is in the ward and after the patient has been discharged encourage the family to bring patients favorite food to promote appetite and prevent malnutrition and also teach family about drug side effects for them to identify and report disturbing effects Okay, so that's um, about family therapy. The reasons why we are providing family therapy is because the family is usually the primary health care giver to the patient. After discharge, the patient will go back home and stay with his family. So if you don't give this uh, family therapy to the family members or the caretakers, uh, you risk this patient being readmitted uh, before his time for review uh, comes okay so by making sure that you provide this family therapy you you will reduce unnecessary readmissions to the hospital okay um, IEC this is uh, the information education and communication that you give to the family and the patient upon discharge so you have to teach uh, inform them about the following you, you these are some of the points that you can concentrate on teach the patient about the important the important uh, the importance of drug adherence it's very important that you uh, emphasize on the importance of adhering to medication to the patient keeping review dates also very important because the patient will definitely be given dates when they are expected to come back for drug refill and the examination um, stress management is important also you need to teach the client some uh, means of relieving his own stress at home to avoid uh, preventable relapses of the mental illness drug side effects very important also they have to know to prevent patients from coming back to the health facility unnecessarily due to drug side effects importance of rest very important also um, that we talk about it to the patient how to maintain a balanced diet and importance of rehydration it's very vital that we discuss these points to the patient so if there are any more points that you would like to talk about under IEC, please you have to feel free to talk about them. Feel free to discuss them. If you need any help, you can always reach out to me, especially if you need points that you would like to write or to 
talk about during your exams okay thank you guys for listening thank you for watching this video if it's your first time and you are, you are not a subscribed member please remember to subscribe uh, as this is a only way you can support me for now thank you so much